What is going on guys, it's your boy Prestige Prince and welcome back to another video. Today we are recapping the turn of events that took place last night. And the major turn of events that took place last night where Francis Ngannou just defeated the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time in mixed martial arts in Stipe Miocic in devastating fashion. In devastating fashion, I can't emphasize that enough, by TKO in the second round live at the Apex Arena at UFC 260 to become the third African champion in the UFC where he reigns supreme with Israel Adesanya and Kamaro Usman as the three kings reign supreme. He's the undisputed heavyweight champion. I mean, to think that this man was homeless a few years ago and now he's on top of the world. He's the king of the mountain. He's the top of the hill. He's the deepest in the ocean, which is Francis Ngannou. An absolute terrific performance by this man. Can't emphasize that enough. The way he fought yesterday was an absolute amazing. Really, really championship caliber performance by him. Championship level performance by him. I was actually picking Stipe. Me, myself, I was picking Stipe to win the fight. Even though he was the underdog. Which is not surprising, to be honest. What was surprising is he's been underdog for his last five fights. With DC and with uh, Ngon. He's been the underdog for the last five fights. But not surprising. I mean, anytime you fight Ngon, you are going to be a bit of an underdog. I mean, he possesses... That, that great equalizer, <laughs> well, a lot equalizer, great equalizers because he possesses dynamite in both hands, both the right and the left. And he actually knocked down Stipe with the left hand yesterday across the cage. So I uh, wasn't too surprising that he was underdog. I thought the fight would go similar to how he did in Boston at uh, UFC 220, uh, where Stipe would wrestle him, uh, mix it up with the striking, and then eventually wear him out in, in, in the later rounds because obviously uh, Francis possesses so much muscle, uh, which obviously does require more oxygen. Uh, in the later rounds, that's where it takes most uh, effect. So I thought it would go similar uh, to that way. My cousin actually predicted, uh, my analyst member, who I don't like at the moment because he's celebrating my face, uh, <laughs> he predicted and was going to knock him out, which he did, so I was wrong. Uh, but yeah, I thought the fourth fight would go similar to the way that it did first time, and boy, I was wrong. It just went completely different. Uh, you just see the leaps and bounds of improvements that uh, Francis has made, especially in the wrestling aspect, because last time Steeper were just shooting and I'm using it takedowns with these single leg, double leg, deep shots all around, and you just take him down easily. And this time he attempted and just got disheartened straight away. So I, I thought Stipe would win, uh, but but he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. It was just a performance by uh, Ngannou. Um, I mean, Stipe's fought DC <laughs> three times uh, over the last three years. So he's only had one opponent uh, <laughs> for the last three years. Uh, obviously, lost. He won the last two fights. Great adjustments, especially in the second fight. Uh, and Ngannou was coming off uh, four wins. Uh, knockout wins in a, under two minutes from uh, Curtis Blaze where he starched and then he beat uh, Kane who he starched again then he, he starched uh, JDS and then uh, just recently uh, last year he uh, starched uh, Rosenstrike so four finishes four knockouts <laughs> obviously people love knockouts uh, as Mark Hunt would say Jesus loves uppercuts <laughs> so um, yeah it, it was just uh, they both were coming off uh, good wins Obviously, Francis has the, has, the, has the better showing when he was coming out for knockout wins. But you didn't get to see much of the wrestling in the last four fights. I mean, that was the main concern coming into this fight. Well, how's his wrestling? How's his grappling? How's he going to do in them exchanges if Deepa does exercise uh, going in, in, into, the, into wrestling uh, and stuff? So uh, the way Francis answered it, hats off to him. Uh, that was the big question which he had to answer. If Stipe does shoot, how, how does he react? How does he stuff? How does he sprawl? Uh, can he get off his back? What can he do off his back offensively? And he, he pretty much answered every question. I mean, uh, the boat started off tentatively. I mean, how the fight went itself. The boat started off tentatively. So uh, Stipe, obviously, he's got to be perfect for literally all the fight. He's got to be perfect all the fight. It's, it's that uh, Wilder Fury uh, syndrome where Fury has to be perfect for 12 rounds. But if Wilder lands that one bomb, a fight could be over. Especially so in the first fight where Fury got knocked down. No idea how he got back up from that. No idea. He just got resurrected. But it's that same sort of effect. If Francis just needs to land one, and it's pretty much game over. But Stipe has to be perfect for pretty much the majority of the fight. I mean, he, he did take a lot of blows <laughs> yesterday as well. Absolute devastating knockout there. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so he has to be pretty much perfect the whole fight. Um, uh, which, which, which was for the first uh, couple of couple of minutes, uh, and after that, uh, it pretty much uh, changed. It was it was that it was that single leg which Stipe shot. When Stipe shot that single leg, and Francis stuffed it, sprawled, stuffed the takedown, then absolutely bullied him from the back, and then uh, took his back, 
gave him some nice ground and pound. All right, shots right to the temple of the head, which I'm surprised Stipe didn't get knocked down from there. Very surprised he took those shots. He just has so much power, so even one shot, uh, you, you're just going to feel it. So I'm surprised he even took them shots, and obviously they backed out from the clinch. But he was just mi mixing up of uh, Nganu, uh, which he was doing through leg kicks, through front kicks, through head kicks, mixed it up with the punches, switch stance. I mean, it was just terrific all around from him. So uh, kudos to him. But I think at the same time, with Stipe, he just got disheartened. You shouldn't have got disheartened with the wrestling. You, you've got ex you've got exchange in the wrestling. You've got to make him work. Tie the legs out. Make him work. Just make him work. Grapple him. Take him to the clinch. Just just make him work. But he, he just I think he just got disheartened after that first takedown attempt. Uh, and from there, you, you don't want to be standing with. If it's if it's a standing contest with Francis, unless you possess some serious striking skills. But at the same time, the striking doesn't elevate to heavier because at heavyweight, uh, the, the distance is different. The distance management is different. So at heavyweight, you just need one overhand. With a matter of seconds, and that's it. Lights are out. It doesn't matter. Anyone can knock you. I mean, Volkov was beating uh, Derek Lewis. Uh, majority of the fight. Lewis lands one, and, and the fight's over. So that, that same distance and reach control doesn't really translate heavyweight. And another thing, it was a small octagon. In the apex, it's smaller. Uh, <laughs> and the smaller you are with Francis, you don't want to be in there with a small octagon. I can tell you that much. So that's, that's another thing as well. So you, you don't have enough room to <laughs> potentially run away like Overeem was doing. It's Stipe literally running away. Obviously, Stipe is not going to do that. Um, so that, that does play a little bit factor as well. I do think that uh, bigger octagon does, does, does favor the, the not the power puncher. So that was another factor uh, that was in the fight. But yeah, the first round, obviously, Ngannou pretty much won. He took the first round. And second round, obviously, well, there wasn't much off the second round. It was just a great, great, great right hand by uh, Nganu, just a short one, just a short one, just see Stipe, he's throwing something and then he just comes across, a left hook right across the, right across his face and just steps him back, pushes him back across the octagon and he gives a, lands with a barrage of strikes right on the chin, Stipe did really well to uh, withhold that and uh, especially that uppercut that he landed off the, off the cage as well, I thought he would have got knocked out by that, which is vicious and uh, from there, Stipe actually came back with a right hand of his own with the right hand fighters on, you see Ngannou just step back a little bit. He's staying step back a little bit and then just take another breath. And a lovely left hook, counter left hook, right on the chin. Uh, and then the steep was all over the place, all over the place. The knee buckled, the legs given out. And then after that, a disgusting, devastating hammer fist, uh, which pretty much uh, ended the fight. Uh, and that's all she wrote. And from there, uh, you see <laughs> Francis, just an absolute joy of a moment with his team where he became... The UFC heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, a couple of years ago, this man was homeless. And to now see him in the octagon, to see him change his life. And he's probably, he's, he's, he's probably the nicest guy in the UFC as well. Yeah, he's a super nice human being. But when you step in that cage, he becomes the most terrifying uh, human being there on earth. So, yeah, that, that was pretty much, pretty much the fight. Just just a great performance all around uh, by uh, Nganu. Uh, his best performance to date. Uh, so, uh, where does he go from here? I mean, the good thing I did like what he said post-fight was um, he's, he's going to be more active. I mean, the heavyweight belt's only been defended uh, three times in the last uh, three years, obviously ex excluding this year, with obviously DC and Stipe fighting three times. So, I did like the fact that he wants to be active. He wants to get back in there straight away and uh, defend his belt, which I like. I like. We all like activity. You see with Kamara defending his uh, belt against uh, Jorge, uh, we just get back in there straight away. And uh, be active. Everyone likes the active champion. Uh, that's where uh, legacies and champions are, uh, are built. So uh, kudos to him for wanting to stay active. Who he fights next? Of course, uh, you have the you have the big elephant in the room. You have the greatest fight of all time in <laughs> Jonathan Dwight Jones. His full name, if any of you didn't know. <laughs> Obviously, John Jones, uh, the greatest heavy, uh, greatest heavyweight, the greatest fight of all time. Excuse me, uh, fighting probably the most scariest um, a fight ever in the UFC. I mean. Everyone, I think, across everywhere is just super excited for this. If this fight takes place, it's probably the biggest fight they can put on at the moment. I mean, if you had, you had, you had Izzy versus Jones, but obviously that's off the table now. Uh, you, everyone knows uh, Izzy would probably got have got mauled by Jones. Uh, he, just, he just took a loss to Yan, so the intrigue's not there anymore. You've got to keep winning for the intrigue to be built. Uh, it's the same with uh, Floyd and Pacquiao. Obviously, they still fought, uh, but it, it wasn't as big and it wasn't at the right time that they should have fought. But, but that, that Izzy Jones fight is pretty much dead. I, I just don't see that happening. Especially with a, uh, Jones' is wrestling and the way that he looked against Yan, the bigger man, it, it would just be too much. But this fight, where you have Jones actually bulking up, going into the frame of a heavyweight, uh, I expect it to be super, super interesting. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, among 
and the UFC fans, it does happen because obviously Jones wants to get paid. Uh, so you need to pay the man. Get, get, I think he hasn't had a million pay-per-view buys yet uh, in the UFC. I think if they do this fight, he's getting his first million pay million pay-per-view buys uh, in the UFC easily. This fight just speaks for itself. Just the, just the name value itself. I mean, you have Francis is going to literally on top of the world. The scariest man who <laughs> ste stepped in the octagon at the moment. Fighting the greatest fight of all time. The man who's defeated a who's who of names. Arranged from Daniel Cormier, Alexander Gustin, Glover Teixeira, Rashad Evans, Shogun Hua, Leota Machida, Rampage Jackson, being a newcomer, Anthony, Anthony Smith, uh, Dominic Reyes, Thiago Santos. He hasn't looked the best uh, John Jones as, as of late I, I don't think he's looked his best to himself um, but I do expect him to be more if a fully more if fully aware of what he needs to do uh, when he steps in against um, Francis Ngannou personally I think he, he's going to beat Francis I think when you fight John you just fight a little bit different but obviously a heavyweight he is his heavyweight debut super excited to see how he how he handles heavyweight obviously the reach is not going to be as effective uh, because going to does possess a, a long reach himself, and uh, the the reach doesn't translate to heavy. As I said, a matter of seconds, and uh, and Gon can shut your lights out. But I think the tools that Jones House uh, has, you know, elbows, knees, kicks. I mean, the takedown attempts, the clinch work, the wrestling, the grappling. I just think the way he mixes it up is going to be a lot of Francis uh, uh, to, to deal with. It's going to be a lot on his plate. Um, but I, I'm hoping it doesn't happen. It can go either way. As I said, with Francis, you can shut your lights out in a matter of minutes. Uh, and that's all she wrote. If that doesn't happen, obviously they've, they've got uh, Derek Lewis is out there as well. Um, uh, that, that's another name where uh, he actually has a win uh, over um, Francis uh, by decision. Probably one of the worst heavyweight fights of all time. Both tentative. I mean, it wasn't a great fight at all. That was a UFC two for one. Um, but uh, you don't really want to see that. The more everyone wants to see the John Jones fight. It's the money fight. It's the fight that makes the most sense. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm sure all of you would agree that that, that happens. Um, where does Stipe go from here? Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough one for Stipe. He said he's, he's going to be champ until he retires. So I don't want him to retire. I don't, I don't want him to go out like that. Um, hopefully not. Um, he, he's, he's, he's better to go out like that. If, if the, oh, hopefully we have the Jones and the um, and Gondo fight take place and then you can't have Stipe take on Derek Lewis, I'd see. Um, that, I think that fight makes the most sense for him. Obviously he's going to take a time out because he's just been killed. You don't want to come back too soon. Um, after getting killed, you, you saw it with um, uh, Bisping when he uh, took the short, for, short fight notice against uh, Gastelum. You just see him get starched in a couple of minutes. So you don't, after getting killed, you need some time out. Uh, it's like he did in the first DC fight. Take some time out, spend some time with your wife and kids. Take some family time. Obviously, I'm not so counsel. I should be telling what to do. But <laughs> just take some time out. And then probably I think the Derek Lewis fight makes sense for him. Uh, if if uh, the Jones and Ngono fight takes place, uh, it makes the most sense. And then the, the, the winners can kind of uh, face each other from there. So I, I think uh, that's what should be happening next. Okay, so that's, that's, that's pretty much my recap. Uh, as I said, great performance by uh, Nganu. Uh, let me know what you, you guys think. Let me know what your thoughts are on how the fight went, who you thought was going to win, who you think is going to win this absolute mega fight that's going to hopefully take place in summertime where you have the greatest fight and the scariest. Um, so yeah, let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Uh, don't forget to follow me on my socials. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Take care and peace.